Welcome to this general teaching. This is for Father's Heart Digital Church and uh, apologies for the lighting and for everything else that's going on here. Uh, we are out on a game farm at the moment. Uh, for those that do not know me, I'm Pastor Leslie Hessel and uh, for the next half an hour, we're going to be sharing God's word. But I'm out in the game farm, out in the KZN uh, area um, or province. And uh, yeah, as you, as you can see in the background, there's quite a bit of cloud and mist around and uh, uh, it's been a very interesting start to the day and I've opted to actually make a recording for tonight rather than actually doing a live broadcast because there's all kinds of uh, potential internet issues and everything else that's, that has been predicted. So rather than chancing anything, uh, I decided just to do a recording and to put it on the uh, upload it to the to the uh, platform and allow it to schedule for the meeting. So it's not evening yet, it's afternoon, and uh, we are in the, as I said, just in the KZN, KZN area. You might see some animals moving behind us, that's why I'm outdoors. Indoors, the lighting is even worse than outdoors, and uh, you can see there's a shadow on my face. I've got lights on here, but they're not really helping me very much in the sun. Now and again pushes through the clouds and then the, the lighting sort of improves and then it goes away again and uh, so it's just been a lot of fun. But nevertheless, uh, let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to once be able to come together to share your word. Lord, as we do that today, we do it with a, a grateful heart, a thankful heart, Lord, for we all face challenges on a daily basis. We face uh, uh different onslaughts of the devil. We face different circumstances. And Father God, all those things test us in our faith in God. And Lord, we always need to trust in you and believe in you and put our faith and confidence in you. And today, Father, as we share your word, we believe that by the time the people are finished with this broadcast, Lord, that they would their faith will be encouraged, their, their hope will be established in you, and they will be able to trust you for mighty exploits, Lord. So we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for everything that is accomplished today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to talk on a topic of, you know, what is your source? Where is your source come from? And who is your source? So obviously the answer to that should be God is your source. But the problem is that there's so many people out there that they depend on so many different things. They depend on their job. They depend on their, their family. They depend on their, uh, you know, everything that's going around about them. They'll, they'll extract it from them. And then basically... God gets neglected. So today, I want us to learn how to fully and completely rely on God for absolutely everything in our lives. We shouldn't just trust God for, say, healing or for finances or for things like that, but we should trust God for absolutely everything in our lives. It doesn't matter what it is, we need to trust God. So I want us to look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 is the foundation scripture as a starting point this uh, afternoon or this evening. And so let's have a quick look at it. It says, yet for us, there is only one God. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6. Yet for us, there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. If you apply your mind, you know, if you believe in God and you believe God is the creator of this universe, then obviously that makes sense. Because... <coughs> excuse me, God is the creator of absolutely everything. Everything was sourced from him. He spoke absolutely everything into existence. So therefore we know that everything that we experience, everything that we see, everything that we have an occurrence to engage is, is God inspired and is God derived and comes from God as the source. So therefore we know that everything, absolutely everything is from God. And therefore it makes total and complete sense that we should learn how to rely on God and everything that is originated from God. So God is your source is the first statement. Second thing is you, it always sounds easier, um, said than done. Because whenever we say to people, trust God, and I mean, the, the chips are down and they are in the circumstance, they're in the situation and they're facing these things, then that's when the challenge comes. That is when they've got to basically say, now, okay, do I or don't I believe in God? You know, I know that many people during the COVID season um, had that opportunity forced on them. All right, they didn't choose it, but it wasn't by choice. It was something that happened. But many people came out of that with a mighty confidence and a mighty ability to trust God and rely on God. 
I've had testimonies given this last week of a lady that spoke about the fact that um, she is a pensioner. She was, she's now, today she's in her 70s, but, but then she was just in her late 60s when COVID started. And she said she didn't have any major pension. She was working and, and supplementing her income with some of the stuff that she was still able to do. But COVID stopped all that where she landed up with a situation where there was no income, it was no nothing, and there was nobody she could actually turn to or rely on but God. And so there was the circumstance in that she had to get into where she had to trust, trust God and believe God that God will come through for her and do what he promised he would do and deliver her from her circumstance. And she came and she gave a testimony last week to say that even in COVID, she learned how to believe God and how uh, resources and things came from all angles. People came and gave her food some gave her money some and she was being supported and and god provided through many people in her life and she was forced to learn to rely on god uh, in a circumstance i know people that 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 zero income and they had to trust god for rent <coughs> excuse me and the rental had to come in and so therefore they had to sit down and they had to trust god so i would encourage you tonight the bottom line is this that we need to learn to believe god and trust him in every single thing and know that he is our source the other thing we need to be very much aware of is the battle is on the devil comes to kill still and destroy he is yet to take us out he hates you and i with a passion um why because we remind him of god all the time and because we remind him of god because we create in the image of god and in the likeness of God. And therefore, when the devil looks at you and I, he doesn't see us, he sees the devil. And therefore, I'm sorry, sorry, he sees God, sorry. And when he sees God, maybe some people he does see the devil. No, no, that I never said that. So, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he sees God in us. And because he sees God in us, all right, he wants to annihilate God, anything and everything that's got to do with God. So he wants to take God right out of the equation. And because he wants to take God right... Just refresh from set of a right. Thank you very much for my sweetheart. Bless you. So, thanks. Let me just take a swallow here. So, <clears throat> we get into a situation then that we need to understand that the devil is wanting to take out every single believer. And he has got no love for you whatsoever. He's got no consideration for you so whatsoever. And therefore, he will do whatever he needs to take you out. He'll lay sickness on you. He'll lay disease on you. He'll steal from you. He'll, he'll destroy you. He'll do whatever he needs to do to take you out. So therefore, stand firm in the things of the Lord. Stand firm in God and everything that is of God because the battle is on. The devil is wanting to take us. It is worse today than it's ever been in, in our lifetime anyway. Because in our lifetime... It has been a challenge and it's been a uh, thing that we had to take on and, and deal with. Then, <clears throat> you also need to understand that the devil is a liar. Okay, He lies about everything. There is absolutely nothing that he does not lie about. He is the father of lies and therefore he will try and convince you that God does not exist. He'll try and convince you that there's all kinds of things that, that, that need to be uh uh, that, that is not applicable in your life. And because of that, he will lie to you about every single thing. All right. And you've come to, you have to come to an understanding of what is truth then? Where do we get truth from then? Truth comes from the Father. All right. And the devil will come and say, oh, you know, you're gonna, not going to make it. You're going to fall flat on your face. God is not going to revive. God won't, won't honor his word. And he'll come with all those things and he will try and convince you that God does not love you and God's not going to come through for you and God will not deliver for you. That is when you and I need to turn it around and flip it around and say, no, my God is not a man that you should lie. I can trust and believe every single word that's written in the word of God because God inspired that particular word. That word stands firm. I can, I can trust that. He says, all my needs are met according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I can stand on that word. I can trust that word and I can believe that word. And even as I do that, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow, nor does my toil add anything to it. He wants me to prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. I have to have the knowledge and the understanding and the conviction that God is my source. He is the ultimate source and that he will basically carry through absolutely everything and deliver on that. God is not a man that he should lie at all. Okay, so therefore God can. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. God is does not change. And so we can 
depend, trust, and rely on every single word that he declares and he speaks. And because of that, we then know that God will come through for us. That is the conviction and the assurance that you and I have to have in our hearts, that God is my source. I don't care what my bank account says. I don't care what my wallet says. I don't care what the, the, the press declares. I don't care what the exchange rate is. I don't care what happens to the petrol price. I don't care what's happening with, with load shedding. I don't care about any of that stuff. Why? Because that does not dictate, my God, I choose to put the word first place. I choose to believe that God is my source and that he will provide even in the in a drought, even in the desert places, even in a place of lack. You know, the story goes in Genesis 26 where we saw that, that, that there was sowing in the time of famine, all right, and I think it was Isaac that sowed. And as he sowed, in the same year, he reaped. Even during that drought, he reaped. And you and I can do the same thing. Then we need to understand that, that God, as he's our own source, we need to have our minds renewed. We need to feed our spirits with faith all the time. We have to go into the word of God and we've got to study with God. You can't let a day go past that you don't allow the word to come in and saturate you and, and, and come in and fill you and flood you. And that is how you and I learn to receive from the Father. It's one thing understanding and knowing what the word says and having a mental assent and having an understanding of what the word says. It's another thing to have it down here in your heart and believe and receive that which the word has for us. In Mark eleven twenty two, the Bible says, have faith in God. In 23, it says, then whosoever, whosoever includes absolutely everybody, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass come to pass it will happen he shall have whatsoever he says in verse 23 there's not even a mention of prayer it talks about your words and what you speak and what you say and if you speak to your circumstance if you speak to your situation if you declare god's word and take the authority that god has given you and i over your circumstances you learn and i learn that the world does not dictate to us. We dictate to the world. So even when things come against us, the Bible says he'll make all things work together for the good for them who are in Christ Jesus. So I have the confidence and the knowledge and the know-how that I don't care what comes. I don't care what the, what the world says and what my circumstances try and dictate. In the name of Jesus, that takes priority. And I can speak into those things and I can um, um, uh, get them to... To, to come in line with what I desire and want for my life. So when, when it, an attack comes, I don't have to just capitulate and bow my knee and allow it to come and, and, and take over. No, in the storm, God will be there with us and he can walk the walk with us, even, even in the midst of the storm. And that's what you and I have to learn and understand. We need to know that, that God is for us and not against us. God works in our lives to bring us to that place of victory. In Christ, and when an attack comes, you're not going to avoid the attacks. By the way, just just for your knowledge, all right, the attack's going to come. But in the attack, God is your source. In the attack, God is going to deal with the circumstance and the situation. Count it all joy, the James says, when rivals, temptations, trials, and tribulations comes against you. Because why? It builds patience. It builds that fortitude, that strongness, that character in that place that you can stand strong in the name, in the things of the Lord. And you're not tossed to and fro because you are convicted. You have a con you are convinced about God and what God stands for. So His word is true and His word is yea and amen. I want you to turn with me then to Psalm 34, and I want to read from verse 8 through to verse 10. It says this, O taste, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. O fear the Lord, you His saints, for there is no one to them that fear Him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Listen to that last piece of that verse. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And it's because of that that we walk in the victory. In this particular passage, it starts out and says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, whenever I, I speak to people, or I teach on this particular topic and, uh, and I speak, I challenge them and say to them, but you know what? Have you ever, have you ever made God 
your last fortitude, your last resort, your last, the, the full and final authority, in other words. In other words, when, when your bank account says to you there's no money, what does that do to you? Do you go into a flat panic or flat spin and become very anxious? Or are you joyful and content because you know that even though your bank account might be empty, God's bank is not empty. God's sources are not uh, um, um, exhausted. God is not at a place where he is lacking or needing. God is the one who speaks it into existence. If he needs it, he just speaks it. doesn't matter if it's there or not. It doesn't matter. If he needs it, he'll just speak it into existence. That's what he did with the creation of, of this world and everything that you see around about us. So we need to come to a place then that we need to taste and see that the Lord is good. And unless you physically commit to trust him and to not uh, compromise in any way, but to trust him and allow him to perform your life, you most probably won't see the hand of God move in your life. So you have to taste and see that the Lord is good. You have to put your foot down and say, you draw a line in the sand and say, so far, no further devil. You take your hand off my finances, off the resources. God is my source and everything. And therefore, I ask your father right now to cause your angels to go about and to, and, and to bring that, those, those uh, resources in so that father can continue in the work that we're doing or uh, can meet a specific need or whatever the case may be. But you, you draw that line in the sand and you say, God, you are my source. I choose to depend on you. I taste and I believe and I see that you are good. You see now, here goes the truth of the matter. For me to be able to experience and see that the Lord is good, the requirement is that I need to taste. So taste means take a bite, eat, chew and allow the, the nourishment and absolutely everything else of that to go into your mouth and into your system. And when you taste, your taste buds in your mouth um, have to chew, they have to taste. So, so I have to embrace the word of God. I have to embrace God himself and allow him to minister into my heart and life. And as he does that, so I can experience, I can taste, that taste is an experience. I can experience the goodness of God and see him faithful in my life. What does that do for me? It grows my faith. It develops my, my, my confidence in God. It develops my trust in God. It allows me to see God as faithful and true and that he's not a man that he should lie and that he will always deliver that on which he promises. And then my life starts bearing fruit. And guess what? The Father is glorified by me bearing forth much fruit. So, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Your confidence and your trust has to be in God. It cannot be in anything else. It has to be in God. It cannot be in your bank manager. It cannot be in your family. It cannot be in your husband or wife. It cannot be in your in your father or mother or grandparents or assets or um, buildings or whatever. Your trust cannot be in that because that can be taken out in a in a in a, in a twinkling of an eye. All right. All you need is some natural disaster or something, and it can wipe out your asset, your building, your whatever you have. Um, the, the currencies and stuff can fall instantly just by money being being uh, taken out of your bank account, foreign exchange falling, rand dollar exchange falling, suddenly just gone. All right. And you find that that which you thought you had, you no longer have. It's gone. It's that, fut it's that, um, what's the word? It's that, um, uh, no, it's not funny, but it's, 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 it, can, it can disappear just like that. All right. And we need to understand that, therefore, we cannot trust in anything that is earthly, worldly, because there's no solid foundation on it. God is unshakable. His word is true and amen forever. It will never, ever change. And because of that, we have the confidence that God can provide. So we see then, blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no one, no want to them that fear him. So if I fear God and I respect God and I have a, I have an awe towards God, I, I believe that God is going to come through and that I respect him and all that kind uh, in, in everything in my life and every aspect, aspect, it says here, there is no want. There will be nothing that I will need or want because God has already provided. God is my source. 
The young lions do lack, and they do suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So here's a key for you already in this, in this little bit of encouragement tonight. The key is seek God. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we already know that there is a seeking after God. It's a firstness in your and my life. It's what we do before we do anything else. And when that happens, God is faithful and will show Himself faithful to us. So we need to trust God, seek God, allow God to, in, in to, uh, to work in our lives and to be part of what we do. Well, that lines up also with seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and you shall receive. We see in Matthew 7. And therefore we've got the, already the confidence that that particular scripture when it talks about seeking, asking and knocking, it's a, what they call a, a present continuous tense, which means Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Because as we do that, so we can, we, 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 we put our faith out there. Trust in God, believe in God, saying, Lord, your word cannot fail. Your word is true, yea and amen. Father, I know and I receive absolutely everything that you've promised. I thank you, Father God. There's nothing that I lack. There's nothing that I want because I fear you. I, I trust you. I rely on you. My faith and my confidence is in you. And because of that, because I'm seeking you and I'm pressing into you, I will lack no good thing. And so that is how we stand on the word of God and we trust him and we believe him and we see his hand faithful in our, our lives and we we trust him and receive that which heaven has for us. The issue is here, the, to me, the biggest con uh, thing that I normally contend with, people have no issue or problem that God is their source. They have no issue or problem to even believe that everything is, originates from God. But they do have a major problem on receiving, all right, to allow that to come. How do I receive? I believe that it will come to pass. And when I, if, I believe, if I believe something, my words, my language, the way I speak, should reflect that all right in other words if i believe that will come to pass then to me it's it's no major issue i know that god will provide he'll come through and before the need is actually uh or the deadline comes that the need has to be fulfilled god is faithful to do that but i can't become anxious i can't become fearful i can't go into a place of depression because that means you're not in a place of faith your confidence is not in God and what God can do and what God has done for you and I. So let's carry on. In James chapter 1 verse 17, it then says this. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All right. So every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. All right. There is nothing that comes from God that's not good. If something comes into your life that's not good, you know it's not from God. So it's just that simple. Okay. So when something comes to your life, you know it's not good and it's not a perfect and it's not adding to your life and it's not adding value. That cannot be God. And therefore you arrest that thing. You bind that thing. You cast it down. You say, Father, I thank you right now that even though the devil tried to lay sickness on me or the devil tried to lay lack on me because my, my default state is healing. My default state is more than enough. My default state is an overcomer. My default state is more than victorious. Um, if I experience anything else but that, it is of the devil and the devil is coming to me. So I come, in, come into a warfare mode and I say, devil, you have no authority in my life. You've got no power in my life. You're not victorious in my life. And therefore, I come against your works right now in the name of Jesus. I bind every single thing and I cast them down in Jesus' name. And I command you to loose my life in Jesus' name. And I command provision to come in. I tell it to move because God says that all my needs are made according to His riches in glory. Where do I see that? I see that in Philippians 9, 4 verse 19. If you haven't heard that scripture before, let me read it for you quickly. And my God shall liberally supply Fall to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know, that phrase, that statement came from Paul when he was speaking, he was speaking to the church of Philippi. And what basically happened was that he was there, they'd opened a bank account for him, a debit and credit account, the Bible says. So that means that they were making provision for the man of God that when he came around, that they will give it to him, or they, if somebody was there that knew him, they'd give it to him to give to the man of God. So they made a provision, they made a gift. And in that context, okay, 
Paul then spoke to them and said, listen, as you have provided for me and you put together for me and you bless me and you give in to me and I'm blessed by your, by your giving, although I've learned to be content in whichever form, or shape or size I find myself, whether it's in plenty, whether it's in black, that's Pastor Laser's paraphrase. It doesn't matter what happens, but when it happens, I have the confidence that I can have that. And because I have that, I can stand on the truth of it. And it's a confidence that I have. So he says, in that context then, you need to understand, and my God will liberally supply, full to the full, your every need according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, by the way, in His riches, there is absolutely no limit to it, because remember, if there's a lack and there's a shortcoming, all that's going to happen is God is just going to speak into existence. So there's absolutely no limit as to God's provision. It is way into, into, into eternity. So there is absolutely nothing that we can get from or need from God that God cannot provide and God doesn't want to put into our lives. So when that happens, we have the confidence then that God will, will come through and God will do what He says He will do in Christ Jesus. So of course, in Christ Jesus, nice little, uh, little caveat there, because obviously you need to believe in Him. You need to come into a relationship with Him. You need to uh, be a part of His family because it's in Christ Jesus that all these things happen. Jesus achieved upon the cross. And if you don't believe that Jesus went to the cross, you don't believe that Christ did it, then how do you participate? You can't participate unless you actually believe. So you've got to believe that Christ actually lived. He went to the cross. He died. He shed His blood. He paid the price for our, for everything in our lives that God will come through and deliver for us. So therefore, we have the confidence then that we can stand on His Word and trust Him and believe Him. And when we do that, we can experience the liberality of God. And it's a full supply. No lack, no shortcoming, no limitation whatsoever. We then also see in Psalm 121 verse 2. It says this, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Remember, everything that we have here in this world comes from the Father. Everything we experience comes from the Father. Therefore, He is the source of absolutely everything in our lives. And we, we can walk in that. Psalm 31 verse 19, how great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men, those who take refuge in you. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now to him who by and in consequence of the action of his power that's at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above and uh, sorry, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest uh, prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. Ephesians 3.20 is a powerful scripture. I love ministering on it because even the run up into that verse, the context around it talks about the fact that you and I need to fathom. We need to determine the depth, the, the, the height, the width of the love of God. We need to look at, and even there, there is no limit to the love of God. So therefore, you'll never get to those limits. So even when you fathom that love, you're not going to find a limit to it. And when you go through that, you can understand that you're going to experience and that then becomes a foundation. So you must be rooted and founded in that love. And when we're rooted and founded in that love, we understand what the Father feels towards us. And the Father then comes and He blesses us and He provides and He, and he pours out upon the life of the individual. And so therefore, we know that God is the source and that He wants to liberally provide for His people and for His children. I've seen many people also, yet they, 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 will, they will agree, they'll say God is the source of everything. But they're not convinced that God actually wants to bless them. That God wants to pour out His provision, His gifts upon them as individuals. I want to encourage you tonight, this afternoon, I want to encourage you. Tap into God because God is ultimately your source. God will provide. It does not matter what your circumstances are telling you right now. I want to tell you that God is faithful. God will stand strong. God will come through for you. So if you're out there tonight and you've got lack, if you're out there tonight and you're battling in any area, whether it's sickness, whether it be Whatever, I don't care what the circumstance in your life may be. I want to tell you tonight that God is your source. We need to learn to trust and rely on Him for everything. We know that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
We know that God comes to give life and life more abundantly. We understand that every good and perfect gift that comes from above. We know that anything bad comes and originates from the devil. Okay, so therefore we understand that God wants, has got my best interest at heart. And that is what we have to trust and believe about God and in God. God today wants to meet you where you are. So let's pray together. Father, I just thank you right now. Lord, that as we are here and we are, Father God, looking at the word and contemplating, and I've gone through many scriptures that, that, that reinforce and confirm the fact that you are our source and that you love us and you provide. Father, I pray right now that for people that are watching, Lord, I don't care what their circumstances dictate. I don't care what their circumstances are telling them. I know what the Word of God says. And Father God, we take authority over every circumstance and every, every situation that is causing your people to be in lack, for the devil to steal from them, to Father God, for them to be destroyed in whichever way. And Father, I pray right now that you should bring a restoration. I pray, Father, for a, a flood of your provision that comes in right now, that you will open up the windows of heaven, that you will pour out a blessing upon them that they cannot contain it. I pray, Father God, that you will honor every single prayer, Father God, they prayed. Father, I thank you that you'll meet their needs, meet their wants, Father, in Jesus' name. I've experienced it in my own life, and I ask you to do it for others that will stand in their faith with you. So, Father, we stand confident in you today, knowing that you go before us. You make crooked paths straight. And, Father God, you make ways where there are no ways. And, Father God, you, as you do that, Father, your word becomes a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Our faith and our confidence is in you. We are have a fear of you, Lord, not from a point of view that we are scared of you, but we have a reverent awe of the goodness, the mercy, the grace, the love, your your omnipotence, your <laughs> omnipresence, Father God, everything about you. And Father, tonight we just want to say we love you, we adore you, we glorify you, we exalt you, we worship you, we lift up your name, for your name is worthy to be lifted up. We thank you that your mercy endures forever, and there's no limit to your mercy that you pour out upon your people. And Father, tonight we receive absolutely everything that heaven has for us, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. So thank you guys for watching. Trust God for a mighty breakthrough in your life, for you to go into a place of victory in Jesus' name, because Jesus paid the price upon the cross, and He cannot and never will fail in Jesus' name. So until next time, may the Lord bless you.